from Interaktionsbyrån. 30% of our employees can't pronounce it. Um, so, uh, we do design and development for digital products. So that's so much more than an interaction bureau. So we are actually changing names. So, um, in the near future, we will release it. Release it. So you can follow me at Twitter at Rosada to see the updates. Uh, Interaktionsbyrån. Um, I founded it 2007, and we have mainly worked with the automotive industry. Um, the big industry. We love the industry. The industry has so much potential. They have the client base, they have the money, they have the production lines, they have the potential to do really, really great stuff. Uh, we have over 15 uh, OEMs. OEM is a car manufacturer in our portfolio. Uh, and I'm going to go to how we are designing for the future. Because these clients, they are facing the future and they really, really need to design for it. For at the moment, someone is sitting in the garage trying to kill them. Uh, and that, that's the truth. Everything is upside down at the moment. Coca-Cola's biggest competitor is a media company, Red Bull, flying uh, from the moon, jumping, base jumping from the... From the uh, space. So a lot of things happening. That's why we're also looking into other industry, not only automotive industry, working within healthcare and smart life. Smart it's a prolongation of smart home because a smart home is not so smart as it looks at today. So if we look at the products that we are designing, um, it's this digital uh, services and digital products. You have a, you, it's a mesh of three really important components. You have the enabling technology that actually enabling the products to exist. And that in that hand could enable new business opportunity, new business flows, and also the design patterns, the design legacy that exists at the moment. So if you look into what kind of services the industry is working on in the future, because the future is uh, today as well. It's a uh, package delivery. If you see Audi is working with uh, DHL and Amazon, so you could get your package delivery in the trunk. Uh, it's quite inconvenient today to order a package. You, I order a lot, and during Christmas I had I think 15 different tickets to go to the post office and they were just stacking up because I didn't want to go to the post office because I knew I would get another one. And they, they are, first they are lying around in the car going and calling me every day, are you home at one? No, sorry, I'm, I'm still not at home at one today either. And then they, um, suddenly after a day they come up to you know, a warehouse far, far off and I need to pick it up. Uh, so this is actually really convenient. I have it on my Volvo, and uh, you, you set the destination to be your trunk instead. And today you need to say that, okay, my car is going to stand here. So it's a little bit uh, um, working that needs to be done in these services. But the biggest thing in the industry, automotive industry, is that we today are changing the business model into selling the car per minute instead of buying it as a whole item. How many of you here have a car? Five, six, person, seven. How many of you have a driving license? I don't know, a little bit more, I'm quite surprised. But this, this is a big, big challenge that the industry is facing. Young people doesn't buy cars and they don't even take driving license. So, um, I will go to explain a little bit how these services work. And if you have the chance to try them out, do that, because that's, uh, that's a must for designers designing these services, to test them and see how they really work in reality. 
Uh, we have this smart car to go. Um, you order a car from your mobile phone. You see where they are in the map. And uh, you, you book it. You have a certain amount of minutes to walk to it. And you pay uh, per minute to use it. You can park it anywhere going inside a region. For example, in Stockholm. You can park it everywhere from free. You leave it there. Uh, then we have uh, BMW that has Drive Now, another similar solution. And we have Audi uh, Unite, where you actually share a car with your neighbors instead. So they take care of uh, the splitting of the fuel consumption, the service cost, etc. And it's split it up automatically. That system has a flow in itself, and the fact <coughs> is that probably your neighbor and you have quite the same life. Both of you want to celebrate Christmas during Christmas. And then everyone wants to have the car at that moment. Um, so, um, things uh, is happening. So, if you're looking at this land uh, in these three different segments, we have technology that, is, that we now have connectivity to the car. The car is connected. Uh, so you could access it, you could unlock it, etc. This was not um, um, enabled for three years ago, which means that the technology enables us to create new services. New business opportunities is coming up. And we are designing it with the design patterns, the design legacy that exists on the market today. You're using your mobile phone to, um, to connect to it. Uh, but if you look at these three properties for design for the future, uh, we need to look into the future as well within these three. How does the technology going to look like in the future? Uh, so in the car industry, we have uh, th this monster coming. They are actually challenging the industry at the moment. Uh, it's electric. Electrification will do a lot. And uh, the, the technology electrification will reduce the cost. So you pay two crowns for per Swedish miles in uh, um, cost for running a car. Um, and uh, it also introduces autonomous, <laughs> semi autonomous drive, which means that partially you could let the car drive. It's very convenient if you go in from Gothenburg to Stockholm for four hours, you could actually do something else. Um, uh, then we have uh, this technology involving. So actually when we have full autonomous drive, even blind people can go in this car. So the technology at the moment uh, is enabling autonomous car. The technology exists there today. Um, Google is driving these cars around, have done it for some years now. And it's very, very simple technology. Not simple, but you don't need to have a centralized system that is controlling all these vehicles, connected so no one will crash into each other. It's small dynamic pulse that analyzes its environment and takes their own decision. At the moment, they are actually uh, becoming uh, legal entities, the cars. So it's the car itself that uh, has responsibility if something happens. Uh, if you think that you are a good driver, you are not. 90% um, of all accidents happens by humans. So by technology, now we could reduce that fail rate. Actually, the, the, the only crashes that have, have been reported now with self-driving cars from the Google project is that the car has been driven too good. It has following the road, road uh, uh, rules perfectly. And a human doesn't do that. So at the moment, we are trying to, to learn the system to drive better, worse. Uh, to simulate the human behaviors, because in an intersection, these two technologies, the human driving and the car driving, will coexist. Um, 
So that's the technology that is enabling uh, that will be enabled in the future, we need to take care of that while designing for the future. You could see the car industry as an example. This is generic, so I'm using it as an example to try to explain how we are thinking while designing for an unknown future. Uh, second thing is that these te technologies, self-driving cars, will actually enable new businesses coming up. And how will that then look like? Yeah, this is our predictions. The car will be a driverless Uber. Uh, that will disrupt the whole industry. You will not longer have the driver there standing smiling for you. You will have the car standing there smiling for you instead. Uh, Uber for you who doesn't know what Uber is, it's a taxi application. Uh, today, it has the same technology as all other taxi brands. You could order the car from your phone, see where it is. You don't need to pay when you leave out the car. But it's a completely different uh, business setup with Uber. Uh, so it's the whole flow of the system that needs to be designed. If you fail in designing this flow, it's very, very, very costly. Um, yes, try Uber if you haven't done it. And uh, when you're in Stockholm or Gothenburg, I don't know if it's existing in gen shopping yet. No? It's, it's really amazing that you just leave the car and it's, it's paid. Um, <coughs> So, you need to look into the business and at the same time you need to know, okay, how will the design legacy look like in the future? What is the normal case on interaction with these kind of or products in the future? And here we see a trend that, uh, this is Amazon Echo, it's a device where you talk to it, just like Siri. Um, and it's voice based, so you ask questions, but at the same time we see this predictive device coming. And that is that instead of you needing to ask, Google tells you that this is how much time it will take you to work today when you're leaving home. So if you combine these two uh, technologies, as in the car industry, you sit in an enclosed environment we can actually predict a lot and talk and communicate with the uh, user inside the car. And then we have this product design. How it will look like with a full autonomous car, we don't know. But imagine that this car instead looked like a Mercedes coming and you needed to sit in the back seat without a driver. It would felt a little bit awkward. And at the same time, these new pods need to communicate that they are autonomous. So we need to design these objects in a completely different way. If this is going to be the taxi in itself as a own product, Today, taxis is put a sign on top of the car, uh, but if the taxi was a car in itself, how would that sell itself? That's part of the, the product design. It needs to communicate that it's free, and it needs to communicate that it's autonomous. Um, so, we are looking into the future, how did the future will look like, but at the same time, uh, we, we are designing a product that needs to fit for the future, but while designing this product, this product will affect the future as itself. So this is an iterative loop that you need to take consider, okay, how might the future look like? How would the product we're designing might look like? And then how would that product affect the future? 
we could have an example from the mobile industry. Uh, this is an industry that completely disrupted every industry. The biggest uh, hotel in the world is created by this industry, Airbnb, and it's a business flow. They don't own any hotels, it's private persons that rent out their homes. So when, when iPhone was released in 2007, no one could imagine what an impact this would mean. That you have all the information in the world for free in your pocket. Even Steve, Steve Jobs understood this. He didn't want to have this ugly third-party application in his phone. So this is really, really, really hard to predict what will come. Um, so today every business is an application business. And if we, instead of taking the phone as an example, what happens if we replace the car in the future and see how will the car affect the future? Uh, the car, as I said, has uh, with the technology, enabling technology will be electrified, which means that it will cost nothing to sit in this car. And the biggest cost in this car is the driver that we now are removing. That's also why Uber is so valued at the stock market today. Um, Travis at Uber said that um, when Tesla is going to launch their full autonomous drive, they're going to, to uh, buy the whole fleet of Teslas. And uh, then Volkswagen is producing the whole Tesla fleet every second day. So Tesla is a small provider and imagine these bigger providers like Volkswagen doing something like this. It's uh, going to change rapidly. Um, yeah. Um, so, if you have anything that could go in these vehicles, sick people, uh, kids, blind, packages, food, um, discos, um, restaurants, anything can go anywhere. Anywhere we have some borders, we have some wars and we have some sea, but uh, almost close to anywhere and can go anytime uh, to no cost. Nothing is of course free in this world, but if I would say that 2007 when the iPhone was released that you would have all your music for free in your pocket, no one would have believed us. Uh, and that this is what's happening here. That we uh, reverse the, the revenue stream, so someone else needs to pay for this. A Google ad costs more than taking you with this pub to a restaurant, for example. So maybe the restaurant uh, buys you the trick, the trip to the restaurant. Maybe it's McDonald's having you uh, covering your cost to Stockholm as long as you're eating hamburgers on your way. Um, so, while designing these uh, products for the future, it could be very likely that your product is infecting the future in that way that it's actually disrupting other industries. Imagine healthcare here. Uh, how would that be affected by autonomous pods? A hospital will maybe not be a house anymore. It's maybe pods that is going around. But you have a patient in separate pods, so they don't need to breathe at each other and poisoning each other with sickness. Um, and in uh, China, there are uh, cities that is ordering uh, cars for the uh, complete city. And that is not democracy. Is planning, but that's the reality that we're designing for. So they are actually uh, making the whole infrastructure, its infrastructure based on a car. And Apple, for example, is interested in this industry. They have uh, rumors that they have 1,500 persons working on a car, 
and they never go into an industry where they don't can make an impact. So I, I see that as a proof for that they are working with this and that things is happening and it's going to happen very, very fast. So designing for the future, uh, we have these chief components that is influencing each other. Everything is a mix that is kind of massaging each other, each other. And this technology that enables business models, that's enabling um, new patterns of designing, and at the same time, technology is, this, is influencing new patterns of design, and design is having impact on the business models. So this is a huge uh, logic puzzle that needs to be iterated. So this if this, the future, then that, the product, is a logical loop that needs to be iterated and iterated over and over. Um, yes, thank you. So spread your risk there among them if you want to do that, if you're betting money on it. Uh, uh, the technology is there already and um, the big companies are launching it within 2020, these semi-autonomous cars. And then it will go quick. What countries say have come the furthest when it comes to the legislation of allowing autonomous cars? California. Mm -hmm. Yes, they are at the moment driving the whole uh, mobility uh, research and the development. Yes. We do, from the beginning, we did, when I entered in the industry, we had pixel displays that was so big that you could count the pixels. And it, then the iPhone came and ever since said that, oh, now we need to have gl glossy images and animations and it should be scromorphic design. And at that time, the leading time was five years to go to market. So it, we needed to say that we can't put the instrumentic design there because the only thing we know is that it will be uh, out of date the moment we are launching the cars. So we have worked in with these traditional UIs. You have a Convy instrument in front of you. You have a graphical um, infotainment system. You have a rear seat entertainment for the kids in the back that you can remote control from the, um, the front. And during that period, this was not so interesting for the top management. It was just a legacy. You should have it and it should be good. That was good enough. But now we are working with products that is adding uh, revenue streams to it and then it gets a lot more attention. So what we do is we are doing a lot of physical prototypes, concept car to these manufacturers to showcase that this is the future. So they actually could feel it by themselves. So we do everything for them. <laughs> Small things to big stuff, strategies. Are there any more? Yeah? Uh, I would uh, ask something which goes in the direction 
I was talking about when you talk to those car manufacturers and you hear them thinking about the future, is in their way of seeing the future, is there always a car in the center of the future or are they thinking about <coughs> traveling? What the, the, it's a, it's a two, two uh, splitted groups here. Someone says that, of course, we need to deliver the hardware that actually enables you to take you from A to B, the car. The other, the modern uh, part, our community, understand that if you want to make really, really good money, it's in the travel that matters. And that it's uh, owning that community that is traveling that is mo most worth. Yes. One of the things that's like uh, with this, you know, the, it sounds like this autonomous, autonomous driving is like uh, it's, it has an element of like removing the human element to it. Um, removing the human element, you removing the human control to the machine. I mean, one of these things is like why Airbnb did so well is you have so many people can get involved in the business model, and so. I mean, isn't there that kind of like, and then you can also make changes to it, like, I mean, there's that, there's that cost aspect. Isn't there a little, like, a, a little worry about moving the human element completely based on cost or moving along the business or growing the, you know, innovating the business? The interesting thing is here that it's going to be other businesses that has this autonomous car as an enabler for their businesses. So, it, this is going to be the next enabling technology just as the smartphone which means it is going to create a lot of new businesses where humans are involved in and it's not that fun driving a car it's quite boring mo 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 mostly of the time you sit in a queue it's, it's a very, very few moments in life where you can have a sport, a sport car driving on these scenic roads without any traffic. <laughs> yeah, but look, at, look in the big cities. You can't go anywhere. You're stuck in traffic for three hours before you get to work. How fun is that? Wouldn't it be more fun to actually have the system more seamlessly routed so you get there for <coughs> much lesser time. Talking about big cities and traffic, how is pay per minute working in traffic? Pay per minute is uh, the time you sit in the car. Yeah, so it's traffic. If you try to jam, it costs you more. <laughs> <laughs> That's one more in the poll. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I was just asking like, uh, a technical question. Hmm? Um, well, the idea is very good, but she used the beauty of driving a car, yes, very true. Um, when the car is like, have an accident, I'm not saying that the technology is not good or anything. It's, I mean, there can be a loophole somewhere. I mean, who will be the interest? Is it the manufacturer, the one who designed it, the owner? Or That's a question that they are looking into it at the moment, legally. It's an ongoing hot discussion. Um, so it's not sold yet, but it's going to be sold because it's so much money into transportation people. Excuse me? If I have plans for Africa, plans for Africa, bring it to Africa. It will come. <laughs> <laughs> It's not hard to detect a road today. Mm. We take one last question at this. Yeah. Um, do you think that the traditional car manufacturers, like you know, your, the ones that you've had on your side, are ready for this change, or will they lose the battle to the <coughs> Everyone is struggling with this at the moment. The hard thing is to get it up for production. Tesla have struggled for 10 or 7 years to actually produce 150,000 cars. So, it's the production that is... So you can't really tell? No. Uh, what does the insurance companies think about selling these cars? Since 
they basically lose money since there are no accidents going on. Exactly. Uh, so maybe it's an, uh, an insurance company will lend you or you will rent a car from the manufacturers. Uh, not with, in this time when it's full autonomous, but in its semi-autonomous part. That you uh, as a risk profile maybe could have a motorcycle because you you are only allowed to drive it during certain amount of times, during certain period of the days when it's statistically not okay to drive, or when it's statistically okay to drive. So this is could actually enabling other groups of people uh, having. Uh, um, cars which they can't have today because of the insurance costs so extremely much, especially abroad. But from a, their perspective, are they against this new technology since their business model has sort of faced? There are many that is against this. Uh, I'm running another company called Bookio and we are, uh, it's a SaaS company and we are removing the bookkeeper. And of course all bookkeepers is against it because they job will be finito. <laughs> and uh, we think it's immoral that the entrepreneurs need to bookkeep, that the bookkeepers actually need to stand in these numbers with debit and credit uh, account the receipt shall be into. It's completely automated in our system. And of course, people get upset by this. But it also releases time for them to do other stuff, like actually adding value to the business by analyzing the numbers, for example. One last thing, actually, about uh, cost, actually. Um, mm -hmm. For, like, uh, the accident thing that brought up, also about, like, repair. Like, what's, like, a car gets flat? Like, how, what's the cost on that? Like, who's responsible for the cost? And how, I mean, how would you, how would a flat be fixed, really, if it's an autonomous car? Then probably um, uh, someone will come and pick it up autonomously and take it to the workshop. Mm -hmm. But there are many solutions of that. It could be workshops that actually go in with physical people and fix it. Mm -hmm. And you will have a, another car picking you up so you can continue to your destination. <laughs> okay, no, we're going to ask one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, only one question is uh, like, uh, from a longer perspective, this feels like uh, the people who are the stakeholders of those companies who are investing in this. These ideas will uh, they will make money for them, and uh, I feel like uh, this makes the rich people rich and the poor people poor. Or it will bring more services to the poor people. They can actually go anywhere for free because someone else is paying for it. Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you.